UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is visiting Northern Ireland to mark the return of power sharing between the province's pro-Irish and pro-British political parties. He has met with First Minister Michelle O'Neill of the nationalist Sinn Féin party and Deputy First Minister Emma Little Pengeli from the pro-British Democratic Unionist, the DUP. Now, the DUP ended a two-year boycott of the province's power-sharing assembly last week after accepting a deal involving changes to post-Brexit rules affecting Northern Ireland's agreement with the European Union. Here's what Rishi Sunak had to say a little earlier. Well, the deal that we negotiated last year, £3.3 billion, represents a generous and fair settlement for Northern Ireland. And crucially, it is sustainable. And it's about ensuring that public finances in Northern Ireland are sustainable for the long term. That's the approach that we've taken that I think will really benefit everyone here. And now that we've got the executive back up and running, it's right that people have their local politicians focusing on their priorities, starting with public services. There hasn't been devolved government up and running here for far too long, but now we do have it and they can start focusing on delivering for everyone. And for more on this, let's cross over to our correspondent Birgit Mass, who's joining us from London. So Rishi Sunak wasting no time there visiting Northern Ireland one day after power sharing resumes. Is his trip just a symbolic lap of honor for one of his government's rare political successes or are there still concrete issues on the agenda? Sarah, it's a real and genuine reason for Rishi Sunak to celebrate together with his Irish counterpart, Leo Varadkar, because the people of Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland regional government, has really been one of the biggest casualties of Brexit, because with the Northern Ireland Assembly not sitting because of objections of politicians to the Brexit arrangements, they had no government, and that meant no political decisions on critical issues. Um, for example, the health service. Um, over uh, A lot of people were waiting over a year. Um, a third of patients were waiting over a year, for example, to, to see a consultant. So it has real-world consequences, and as such, has been a bread and butter issue for, for the people of Northern Ireland. So it's not only Rishi Sunak and Leo Varadkar celebrating, but I think a lot of people in Northern Ireland um, sighing a sigh of relief. Mm. And in fact, the British government uh, also, for its part, hailing the latest agreement as cementing Northern Ireland's place as part of the UK. Um, but we have to mention, Birgit, that, that Sinn Féin's all-Ireland leader, Mary Lou MacDonald, says that it brings a united Ireland within touching distance. I just want to hear um, what the Sinn Féin First Minister, Michelle O'Neill, uh, in Stormont, uh, thinks. Let's have a look. But I would absolutely contest what the British government have said in that document insofar as my election uh, to the post of First Minister demonstrates the change that's happening on this island. And that's a good thing. It's a healthy thing because this change, I think, can benefit us all. So when Mary Lou MacDonald talks about um, that it is within touching distance, I believe that we are in the decade of opportunity. And I believe also equally that we can do two things at once. We can have power sharing, we can make it stable, we can work together every day in terms of public services, and whilst we also pursue our equally legitimate um, aspirations. All right, so Birgit, anchoring Northern Ireland's place in the Union or moving closer to a united Ireland, what are the pundits saying? What are you hearing out there? The polls are really not clear at this stage, so a majority of people in Northern Ireland and also in the Republic of Ireland would have to vote for a united Ireland. So it's not clear whether that would get through, but that the Sinn Féin, that they want that, they've always made that clear, it's their political aim. I've interviewed many Sinn Féin politicians uh, in the past and they've always maintained that their aim is a united Ireland and that has to come about by a poll of, of voters in the North and also in the Republic of Ireland. And while it might not be that they're there yet, but it seems to be that the hardline views against a northern, northern a, a reunification or unification with the Republic, that those views might be shifting, might be softening um, in Northern Ireland. And that's really something quite extraordinary that's uh, taking place uh, in Northern Ireland as a direct consequence of Brexit. So the, the Sinn Féin, who's been associated with the IRA, with the armed struggle um, against Britain and, and armed struggle for United Ireland, is now forming an executive and is, is clearing a way for at least the possibility of a United Ireland. And this is really quite an extraordinary moment.
here. Get mass in London. Thank you.